All right, in this lesson, we're going to continue our conversation talking about the E1 reaction. But now we're going to talk about an E1 reaction that actually works. So this is called, or what I call, the practical E1 reaction. And it's going to follow sort of the same mechanism we saw with the E1, but this one's a little more useful. And instead of starting with an alkyl halide, we're actually going to start with an alcohol. So we're going to start with an alcohol, and because it's an E1 reaction, we're going to form an alkene. Okay? And it turns out that this reaction is really the opposite of a reaction we've already covered of acid-catalyzed hydration. So if you remember the acid-catalyzed hydration reaction, in this reaction we had an alkene, Right, in acid catalyzed hydration, you have an alkene, you treat that with a catalytic amount of acid, and you get out an alcohol following Markarnikov's addition. Okay? So, our practical one reaction is just the opposite of that. In the acid catalyzed, acid -catalyzed hydration, we go from an alkene to an alcohol using a catalytic amount of acid. Now, we're going to be going from an alcohol to an alkene, okay? And now, we're not going to be using a catalytic amount of acid. We're going to be using a concentrated amount of acid, okay? So, we're going to be a concentrated amount. So, again, we can write that as concentrated H+. Plus. You might see me write concentrated H3O+. Plus. The specific acid we use are H2SO4 or H3PO4. So generally, I'll try to just let you know that it's concentrated. All right. So let's look at an example of this. Let's work through the reaction and the mechanism. So we're going to start with an alcohol. We're going to treat this with concentrated H2SO4, right? And then now we know the product we're going to form is going to be an alkene. Okay, we're going to be forming an alkene. So when we started with an alkyl halide, we know that that was a good leaving group. The problem is an alcohol is not a good leaving group. So I know we can have bases like NaOH, but this carbon-hydrogen bond is quite strong. It's hard to break that carbon-oxygen bond, as is. And that's where really the acid comes in. Okay, so before that OH can leave, we have to make it a better leaving group, all right? So when we have concentrated H2SO4, right, that's a strong acid, so we know we have H+, plus. we know we have some water, okay? So the first step in the mechanism is we need to make this OH into a good leaving group. So what we're going to do is we're going to protonate the lone pair on the OH. So we protonate that bond. So the oxygen had two lone pairs, right? It had two lone pairs here, but now, oh, excuse me, one of these lone pairs became a bond Okay, so now that oxygen only has five valence electrons and it has a positive charge. <clears throat> now what we've done here is we've made a good leaving group. What is that molecule? That's water, right? We now have an oxygen with a positive charge. It has no interest in being connected to that carbon anymore. So now we're going to undergo sort of the E1 process. This is a good leaving group. That's a water molecule, so this carbon-oxygen bond is now going to break. So this bond here is going to become a lone pair on our O, right? We're going to eliminate out that water molecule. The consequence of that is the carbon that had the OH now only has three bonds, right? Remember, there was an H here. Carbon always forms four bonds. So that now has three bonds and a plus, right? So we don't have to draw that H in, right? We should be at the point where we know that there is an H here and that the carbon only has three bonds. 
So you'll see me less drawing in those H's, right? But if you wanna keep track of it, this carbon with the dot has three bonds. There's one H that we're not drawing in here in the bottom. I have drawn that. Okay, so we protonate to make the OH into a good leaving group. The water molecule leaves to form our carbocation, okay? And now we're gonna finish the mechanism, right? Remember in the E elimination reactions, there's the carbon, right? I need to look at the hydrogens attached to the adjacent carbons with a square. Again, this is symmetric, so it doesn't matter what we use. And we're now going to be using our water, the lone pair in our water, as our base to form a new bond to that hydrogen atom. And then these two electrons are gonna form the double bond, right? So when we deprotonate that hydrogen, we now form our alkene, right? Again, so we've now formed H3O plus, right? This becomes H3O plus when you add that hydrogen. But again, we don't really need to draw that, right? In our final product, we just wanna show our carbons. We should know that that's there, but we don't really need to draw this in as a final product. All right, so that's the mechanism of this reaction. Step one, protonate to form a good leaving group, right? And then now we're going to do our elimination, our elimination reaction, our E1 mechanism. Eliminate the water and then deprotonate, right? The E1 is sort of a two-step process here. Eliminate and then deprotonate. Okay, so that's the practical E1 reaction because this reaction actually works and works quite well, All right? This is a good reaction. So let's just look at one more example to make sure we're comfortable with this, right? So let me draw in another example here. Um, OH. If we treat this with concentrated H3O plus, right? Here, I'm not gonna do the mechanism, okay? But the mechanism's the same, right? We're gonna really protonate this OH. That's gonna leave, right? So we'll get a carbocation here. Now we have a couple of choices on where to abstract the hydrogen, but what do we always wanna do? We always wanna form the most stable alkene, right? So this carbon here has three hydrogens, that has three, that only has two, so we're gonna abstract here. We always wanna form the most stable alkene we can. So in this reaction, here we'll form a tri-substituted alkene as our final product, okay?